Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, excellencies, speakers, and everyone watching today. Bienvenidos, bienvenue, welcome to the Dialogue on Action Coalition on Technology and Innovation for Gender Equality. My name is Hélène Molinier, and I am the Senior Manager and Thematic uh, Technical Lead for this Action Coalition. I have the privilege of being your moderator for the today's program. Before we officially start, I would like to draw your attention on some technical features. First, I will ask all the panelists and speakers to turn their video off while they're not on the panel. You will see that there is a sign language and interpretation is available in the setting. You can click on the icon at the bottom of the window and select your language. We have interpretation in English, Spanish, and French. You can also use the chat function throughout the event to share feedback and ask questions to our speakers. So we're going to spend the next hour together with an exciting program. First, we will be joined by the executive coordinator of the Generation Equality Forum. She will set the scene with a visual story of the Action Coalition journey and share with us opening remarks. This will be followed by a first segment meant to set the context and give you more information on this coalition, how it was created, what is the blueprint, and what the leader have been working on for the past year. We will then move to four consecutive discussions where we will be joined live by our coalition leaders and their guests to present to you each of the four priority themes that have been identified for this coalition. The leaders will talk about their ambition, what excites them, and what is um, waiting for us in the work ahead. This will be followed by a Q&A session and a formal closing where we will unveil the vision of the coalition, which has been prepared to, for us by a young artist. We hope this program will inspire you. So let's start. It's a joy to introduce to you our first speaker. She is UN Woman, a director of the Civil Society Division, but most importantly, she is the executive direct coordinator of the Generation Equality Forum. Please welcome Lopa Banerjee. Lopa, over to you. Thank you so, so much, uh, Hélène. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm getting a message that says you're muted. So I, I was just wondering. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Helen. And greetings to all our wonderful Action Coalition leaders and partners and everybody joining this conversation. It has been two such very, very exciting days. It is 9 p.m. my time here in New York. And I am so energized. I don't even know how I am going to go to bed at 12 when this session will end for me, midnight when this session will end for me. But it just speaks to the enormous richness of conversation that we've heard, the, the commitment that we have seen from all participants and especially the Action Coalition leaders and, 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 and participants in these discussions, these uh, last uh, two days in particular. But, but let me start by thanking all of the Action Coalition leaders Thank you for this journey that you have been on with uh, all of us uh, for the last two years. When we launched the Generation Equality Forum, we were clear that there was only one reason to set up the Generation Equality Forum. And that was that 25 years after Beijing, no country in the world had achieved gender equality. And we simply could not carry on with the status quo as it was. That in spite of rhetoric and, um, and, 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 and um, statements about uh, the commitment to gender equality, there were words, but no deal. And therefore, the need of the hour was to move to deeds, to real funded, game-changing actions. And so uh, the, the Action Coalition leaders came together to do exactly that. And this was further heightened by what we saw ourselves in last year with the pandemic. The pandemic 
not only highlighted and illuminated the systemic inequalities, but also amplified pre-existing inequalities. It shone a light on, on the broken world and the broken system that had entrenched inequalities. As far as the gender digital divide is concerned, even though the entire world moved into a digital mode, women who had been deprived, who did not have access uh, to digital services were further deprived by their access, uh, by their lack of access to digital tools. They were deprived of their basic economic, social, and civil rights. Um, leaders, participants, and dear friends, we know that women are 20% less likely to use the mobile internet than men. The gender gap in mobile internet use in low and middle income countries is, is substantial, with over 300 million fewer women than men accessing the internet on a mobile. And therefore, this opportunity that we have at this point in time to build back equal and transform for, from COVID. This is the opportunity that all of you as action coalition leaders took. And we came together as a multi-stakeholder, innovative platform, determined to build a more inclusive and sustainable world with gender equality at its core. So the Action Coalition multi-stakeholder co-creation process began. And after 2,000 letters of interest were received to join the Action Coalitions, 95 leaders came together last year from governments, from civil society, from youth, from international organizations, from the private sector to build together this collective vision for change through design sprints and action coalition workshops, leading us to the set of critical 24 game changing action um, framework that was launched at the International Women's Day earlier this year. And we are now at this moment in time when we are all together ready to act for equal. The six themes of the Action Coalitions, uh, including the Action Coalition on, on Technology and Innovation, have at their core uh, the idea of driving a game-changing commitments. The blueprints that you have all been developing will ensure that through concrete actions, the lives of millions of girls, adolescents, and women will be improved and transformed so that they can access their rights and the use of gender responsive technologies and innovation fulfilled. Going forward, we need more stakeholders to join the action coalitions and to, uh, to come forward as Thank you so very, very much to all of you for your engagement. And as we move forward from this kickoff in Mexico on to Paris, where we will unveil this slate of commitment. I wish all of you enlightening and fruitful and exciting discussions now. Thank you and over to you, Len. Thank you so much, Shoba, for bringing so much energy and passion into the room. So let's start. Um, last year, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said in a very powerful speech that digital technology is one of the five areas where achieving gender equality can transform our world. Leaders of the world have answered his call for action. And today, I am honored to present to you the leaders of the Action Coalition who will tell you in a short video why we need collective action now to leverage technology and innovation for our gender equality. So I'm going to ask the technical team to launch the first video. 
we are proud to come together to welcome the Generation Equality Forum. 25 years after the words, women's rights are human rights, echoed from Beijing throughout the world, it's an honor to support this monumental effort to accelerate progress for women and girls and lay out a path to achieving gender equality within our lifetimes. The digital revolution has been the most profound transformation of the world since the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing in 1995. The increasing gap in access and in use of technology has led to an exponential increase in inequalities between countries and between women and men. Como todos hemos visto, la pandemia ha aumentado la digitalización en todas las actividades de la vida, incluyendo el trabajo, la educación y el acceso a servicios básicos, convirtiendo la tecnología en una herramienta de primera necesidad. Technology and innovation for gender equality is really about building a world that is built for us and with us. Inherent biases in society show up in critical technologies that affect who succeeds and who is left behind. Young people and women have to be centered in technology and innovation in order to achieve a world that is fair, equal, and healthier for all of us. We believe that technology and innovation can be our best friend in achieving the equality. They can be mean for us to exploit the best of our potential and solve the social problems that the world is facing now. Consequences of wars, pandemics, disasters, and not only. Digital is the powerful accelerant we need to get the SDGs back on track. But right now, we see significant gender gaps in technology at every level, from digital access to digital skills, and digital leadership opportunities. Women and girls are still globally lagging in behind in technology and innovation in one way or another. For example, girls are five times less likely to consider a career in tech. Only 11% of tech startups have a female CEO. One in five girls have left or significantly reduced their use of social media platform after being harassed. Our partners are relying on digital tools for their movement building work more than ever before. These new tools and technology systems are critical to sustaining feminist movements. At the same time, feminist groups face unprecedented levels of online harassment and censorship. Gender equality is not a women issue or only a basic human right. It's crucial for sustainable future and inclusive societies. We are aware that tackling gender equality is an intricate and lengthy process, but we strongly believe that digital technology can help fast track progress. We need to take action now because we have to innovate and use technology to tackle the accelerating inequalities that are affecting the livelihood, dignity, autonomy and safety of girls and women in a rapidly digitizing world. Technology moves very fast. It started with the Internet, but continued with artificial intelligence, big data and data analytics, cloud computing, affecting now all aspects of the lives of billions of people. We have to harness the power of data, technology and innovation to help give women equal voice, equal pay and economic resources. And to identify new gaps we need to fulfill and new opportunities we need to seize. Globally, gender equality in tech and innovation will dismantle harmful gender stereotypes in the workplace, increase scholarship opportunities for girls and women to study STEM courses, and create awareness for young people, parents, guardians, and educators on online bullying and harmful behaviors. We hope the UN Generation Equality Action Coalition will help us catalyze resources and more to reclaim technology and innovation for the gender justice movement who are creating a better world for all of us. We need to work together, harness the power of partnership, and pull out all stops to ensure women are inspired and empowered to take their place as equal leaders in our global digital transformation. So let's go forward with courage, 
conviction and determination to achieve transformative change for generations to come, to take bold decisions, to capitalize action and deliver concrete results, to make international commitments, a lived reality for women and girls everywhere. El escenario post pandemia nos abre una oportunidad única para reconstruir mejor, promoviendo una reactivación económica con perspectiva de género, impulsando acciones audaces que nos permitan cumplir un rol protagónico en la revolución digital. As we start a drive for commitments to be announced at the Generation Equality Forum in June in Paris, we commit to mobilizing all stakeholders for bold and ambitious commitments in our areas of expertise. It's time to move from words to action. This is our opportunity to make gender equality a reality for all generations. Join us and act for equal by making a commitment today. Thank you once again, dear leaders, for stepping up, but more importantly, for being a force to engage and mobilize new partners around these critical issues. So I am now going to take a couple of minutes to go through the Action Coalition Blueprint and its various elements. We call it a blueprint because it is a design plan on how to achieve accelerated results. For a year, we have gone through numerous rounds of consultations and expert discussions to identify what are the key levers for change and impact. So first, let's start with our vision. Technology is not just about jobs or the economy. It is about being able to live a fulfilling life. This is why by 2026, we want women and girls in all their diversity to have equal opportunity to safely and meaningfully access, use, lead and design technology and innovation with freedom of expression, joy, and boundless potential. In this vision, we call for collective responsibility, especially from governments and corporations, to develop bold gender transformative actions, to widen innovation ecosystem, to embed transparency and accountability in digital technology, and expand inclusive digital economies. To translate this vision into actionable commitments, we reviewed the current landscape and tried to identify where a multi-stakeholder approach could be a catalyst for change. All the available data show that the gender digital divide is a multi-dimensional phenomenon. So for us to be impactful, we need to identify tactics that will bring long-term transformational change. It meant designing a blueprint that would help remove the current barriers associated with traditional social norms, lack of education and skills, the cost of devices and data plans, trust and safety concerns, but also the lack of investment and accountability system. So in order to achieve this, the leader have identified four priorities we are unveiling today. First, to bridge the gender gap in digital access and competencies. Our ambition is that by 2026, the gender digital divide across generations is reduced by half. In order to do it, we have identified three tactics. The first one is on service delivery. We want to develop solutions that improve accessibility of digital services, of distance learning, but also improve affordability of devices and data plans. The second tactic is on financing. We want to advance innovative financing mechanisms to meet the demands for 21st century skills and reach universal digital literacy. The last one is on social norm. We want to make sure that we address the stereotypes and engage teachers, caregivers, communities to prevent practices that are currently limiting girls and women access to digital tools or to STEM education and careers. Our second priority is to invest in feminist technology and feminist innovation. Our ambition is that by 2026, we increase investments toward feminist technology and innovation by 50%. Our first tactic and priority is to drastically increase investments 
towards innovation processes that specifically generate gender transformative impact and respond to women and girls most pressing needs. We also want public and private sector actors to adopt policies that help embed gender in technology development and innovation and that prevent biases and foster knowledge exchange. Finally, we want to leverage data science to develop more inclusive and ethical analytics. We want to systematize the use of accountability frameworks, such as, for example, AI audits or gender impact assessments. Our third priority is to build inclusive, transformative, and accountable innovation ecosystems. Our ambition is that by, is that by 2026, we double the proportion of women working in technology innovation. And in order to do that, we really need to transform the current ecosystems. First, we need to create gender transformative networks within the existing digital and innovation hubs so that we increase the visibility and influence of women in technology, that we stimulate collaborations and provide opportunities for mentorship. We also need countries and companies to adopt policies and benchmark that boost women and girls leadership and full participation in the technology sector in every role. And we need finally to create new data sets. We want to transform the way we measure inclusion and diversity in digital, in digital economies, but also in digital societies at large. The final priority, but not the least, is to prevent, eliminate online and tech facilitated gender-based violence and discrimination. Our ambition is that by 2026, a majority of countries and tech companies demonstrate accountability by implementing policies and solutions against online gender-based violence. This is a very ambitious objective. And we think that first it requires to design tools, systems to better prevent, detect, respond, and monitor online abuse and harassment faced by women and girls in all their diversity. It also requires to adopt adequate legislation and to train and fund law enforcement to better prevent online gender-based violence, but also to provide effective relief to survivors. And finally, it requires that all of us, public, private, civil society actors, we demonstrate cultural change and we mobilize everyone to stop harassment that specifically targets women and girls. We sincerely hope that these themes resonate with you. And we're really eager to hear from your thoughts and to hear your feedback. In several segments of this dialogue, we will be using polls to give you the opportunity to provide collective feedback. The I'm asking the technical team to launch the first poll, which should be appearing on your screen, asking the following question. Which action do you feel the most energized around? And you will see the four categories I just presented. Bridge the gender gap in digital access and competencies. Oh, the results are already, oh, the results are showing as I speak, fantastic. Invest in feminist technology and innovation. Build inclusive, transformative and accountable innovation and consistent. And prevent and eliminate online and tech facilitated gender-based violence and discrimination. You have a few more seconds to fill the poll. Perfect. So it's quite even, except that we have very, uh, I think, a larger group today that is interested in feminist technology. Exciting. So let's move to the next segment. And this is my great pleasure to introduce this next part. We are going to be joined by our leader themselves and their guest moderators. As I mentioned earlier, what we're going to do is to have four consecutive discussions one for each of these four themes. And the leaders are going to talk in more details about their ambition for this coalition and what they hope to achieve in the next five years. For our first discussion, we will see a panel that was recorded earlier on to accommodate the participants that lived in a different time zone. I'm pleased to introduce you to the first moderator of this segment, which is who is Anne Peterson. She's the Director for Communication and Digital Engagement at Digital Opportunity Trust. 
I'm asking the technical team to launch the second video and Anne, over to you. Hi, everyone. We're happy to be here today talking about uh, bridging the gender gap in digital access and competence. I'm Anne Patterson. I'm the Director of Communications and Digital Engagement at Digital Opportunity Trust. DOT is an international organization that places youth and particularly young women at the center of community change. And we support youth to become social innovators and entrepreneurs. And today I'm really excited to be speaking with Sylvia Pohl, who's head of the Digital Society Division at ITU, and Ufa Modi, who's co-founder and global lead of Digital Grassroots, about the Action Coalition commitment to reducing by half the gender digital divide across generations by accelerating meaningful access to digital technologies and universal digital literacy. Um, so today we're going to talk about their approaches and perspectives on why digital access and digital competencies are really important now more than ever, as well as the pathways to success that they see um, in achieving these goals by 2026. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with a few questions and we'll have Ufa and Sylvia introduce themselves as well. Um, to start the conversation, I wanted to ask you both, and Sylvia, we can start with you. Um, why is this theme important to you um, and to ITU? And how was it selected as a part of the Action Coalition's work? Thank you, and yes, my name is Sylvia Paul. I am the head of the Digital Society Division in ITU. Thank you for your engagement and your participation also in this coalition. For ITU, this theme is very crucial to bridge the gender digital divide, since it is increasingly clear that having the right digital skill sets is a prerequisite for accessing and thriving in the digital world. Empowering women and girls to access the internet and acquire the skills to use digital technologies upon, opens up opportunities to find work, start businesses, sell products to new markets, and take advantage of digital financial services that can confer a degree of economic independence. And women and girls are empowered through digital technologies. Data shows that their families, communities, and national economies benefit as well. So for us, it's very important that this is a crucial theme in the work that we're doing. It has been estimated that bridging and uh, bringing an additional 600 million women and girls online could boost global GDP by as much as 18 billion US dollars. This is all in line with ITU's mandate. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, Ufa, same question to you. Um, why, why is this uh, theme important to you and your organization? Thank you, Anne. Um, my organization, Digital Grassroots, which I co-founded in collaboration with um, other youth from other countries, um, is focused on bridging the digital literacy divide between young people, predominantly females, from underrepresented regions in with respect to internet governance and digital rights. So to us, um, this speaks to the ability of young girls and young women to make use of technology and get access to modern devices that are required for their future. It is very difficult for um, girls or young um, women to be able to participate meaningfully in the digital economy if they are not even able to have the required skill sets or even understand the benefits of the technology. So um, we believe that being young leaders and youth leaders in this action coalition would help us to develop the resources that we need to promote this inclusion for um, um, young girls and young women. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, and it's so important now more than ever, right, that girls and young women are able to meaningfully participate in the digital economy and have access to all of these emerging opportunities. And we know that the COVID pandemic has really accelerated 
um, the use of digital across many different institutions and in the economy. And so I'm curious about your perspectives about how the COVID pandemic has influenced um, you know, access to technology for women and girls and what you've seen in your work and what you see as the potential for uh, this coalition to really take action on this for women and girls. And Sylvia, maybe we can start with you again. Thank you, Anne. And this is a very, very important question. And, and for ITU, we have been dealing with this question in, in the last year. And we see that the global pandemic is definitely exacerbating existing gender inequalities. And we're very worried about it. And it's impacting women in a very disproportionate way through job losses, lost learning, increased rates of domestic abuse, and an added burden of care for family members, especially women. But the COVID pandemic has also unleashed an epidemic of its own in the form of a plague on online scams, fraud, and malware. Experts speaking at ITU Digital's Corporation Webinar last year cited a spike in phishing traffic of 800% with social media platforms like Google reporting tens of millions of daily malware emails and COVID-related spam messages. The world's transition to digital has made us vulnerable to a whole host of bad actors seeking to exploit, exploit our naivety and our fear, and this has happened especially for women. For all these reasons, the Leadership Coalition took different elements into consideration, which made discussions quite and articulated, however, uh, we are very satisfied about the final outcomes and results of these discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. And Uva, over to you. I'm curious about how the pandemic has influenced your work and, and what you're seeing change in the world as a result of it. Okay, so for this particular question, I'm going to speak from my reality as a young person from an underrepresented region. At Digital Grassroots, we've always tried to leverage the technology as a connector for um, building our networks and bringing everyone online. However, even before the pandemic, this has been quite hard because uh, many of the new and emerging devices that come up always need some sort of um, high connectivity network or sophisticated um, kind of platform to work on and devices which many people from our communities which are young people from rep young girls and women from on the represented regions do not even have access to these kind of devices or even the skills to make sure to make use of these devices in order to participate meaningfully or get other digital skills that can help their um careers and profiles and um dreams as a whole so um with this, um, the pandemic has basically increased this gap for us, and but at the same time, it has helped us. Uh, let me say, it has helped to spotlight all the loopholes that has um, been created and to help us, um, let me say, promote the message on why it's in the first place it was important to get people online and even have access to the skills and devices that are used to come online as a whole. That's great. Thank you. Um, and so my next question is actually, and maybe if we could start with you this time, because um, I think it's a great segue uh, from what you just spoke about. Um, you know, the Action Coalition has made a commitment to reducing by half the gender digital divide. And there are a number of tactics that have been mapped out as a part of that. So what most resonates with you as a tactic and what tactic are you most energized about as one that will really tangibly make a difference for you in your context okay then again speaking to my experience um, and um, bouncing back from my community that i come from um i think i would have to go with social norms because um that is one of the biggest influence to cultures and traditions in sub-Saharan Africa and um, people tend to believe in how communities devolve and evolve so um, when people see um, things that are normally accepted in a community it is easy, it's easier to pass it down and to um, basically um, see it become a norm so when we are talking about um, 
making the uh, making a young girl or um, a young woman engaging technology and having access to all the amazing pieces of devices that are um, available right now we need to see these things happen we need it to be like a, a normal thing we need it to be a household thing and not something that is selected for a certain kind of people uh, we need the girls to be able to believe that they too can have access to these things and use these things themselves yeah, super, thank you. And Sylvia, same question to you. Um, what tactics do you most resonate with um, as being a, su a successful way to achieve these goals? For ITU, we have two ta tactics. We have the service delivery, delivery, which is investing in innovative and gender transformative solutions that improve affordability, accessibility, and usability of digital uh, services and learning tools for women and girls, and then social norm, norms, how to promote large scale social transformation to close the gender gaps in access to digital tools and STEM careers related educations and innovation. The first tactic is very much related to the core activity of the ITU. Our work is critical to ensure that the needs of all people, including groups with specific needs, such as indigenous people, persons with disabilities, older persons, youth, children and women are considered so that no one is left behind. While our work is focused on digital, the efforts we make are aimed at ensuring that everybody without distinction can contribute to and benefit from the digital economy and society. Through this tactic, we hope to support the design and implementation of national digital strategies that actively aim at closing the gender digital access, adoption and use of gaps and enhancing the affordability of digital technologies at the same time as increasing online safety. National digital strategies and policies should include targets, both numbers and dates, for closing the digital gender divide across at least four dimensions, namely extend networks and digital access to rural areas, promote access to and affordability and use of connected digital services, uh, especially for low, low income individuals, boost availability and promotion of e-banking and mobile uh, money, and uh, increase online safety. The second tactic for us helps address stereotypes, target existing gender biases in education, curricula, encourage greater female enrollment in STEM studies, and more generally bridge the skills gender divide in digital era. Addressing the digital gender divide requires sufficient awareness and strong cooperation across stakeholders, and tackling gender stereotypes is critical. In many economies, the digital gender divide is particularly large in STEM education and in high technology sectors that require STEM. So both tactics for us will be crucial to be able to move forward. That's great. Thank you, Sylvia. And I think um, that really leads us to our next question, which is, you know, what are some of the pathways to success? And Sylvia, I think you, you actually just mapped that out very well. So, um, Ufa, I'd like to turn to you and talk more about that. So you talked about social norms and, you know, groups with specific needs. Um, what pathways do you do you see in your work to being successful? And maybe you could share a little bit more with us. Yes, um, um, Sylvia has pretty much touched on a lot of them and I would agree on what she has said. Um, but also I would like to add um, in the financing bits that would also want to see more um, more financing go towards making these kind of devices available for the girls because um, I think that the stage that we are in right now uh, when uh, is when many of the people that are still excluded are because of financial reasons so if we can see some aid go to that sector um, I believe that that would help to um, bridge the gap and then stretching again on social norms um, we have to challenge the mindsets of the public and the global cultures of people. I know that um, many people come from different um, aspects and of the world where the um, attitudes to girls are varied all over the world, but we need to all come together and challenge the mindset of the globe and get that unifying thing that agrees towards the um, girls and technology. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, Sylvia, I'm curious about who you see as 
the key partners that we really need to mobilize around these tactics that you've mapped out in order to achieve these goals? For us, uh, and to have success, multi-stakeholder approach based on international collaboration will be crucial for, for this success. And partnerships are very important. Private sector and civil society will, will be very important for, for the work that we're going to try to do. There are a range of private sector and civil society initiatives aiming at digital inclusion through improving technical access and affordability of broadband and mobile networks that complement government policy actions and which could also offer lessons. Governments need also to increase their efforts in including national policies and strategies to close the digital gender divide. So that means we need everybody. We need the private sector, we need civil society, and of course the roles of governments is very important. In addition, we need to, have to add more detailed and consistent evidence concerning the digital gender gap. Uh, for, for, for us to, at a particular, at the national and subnational levels, we need to work with research institutions and government to have more data, the correct data, to be able to see if we're moving the needle and able to achieve the goals that we want. Yeah, absolutely. And Ufa, how, what are your thoughts on that? What, um, who do we need to engage in order to achieve these goals? Well, well, I would say the um, I would agree and say the uh, multi stakeholder model always works, but I believe that there's the one sector that's always excluded and that's the youth. Um, I want there to be much more emphasis on the collaboration with young people to achieve these goals. It shouldn't just be an item of tokenism. It shouldn't just um, there should be more collaboration with the young people. Young people make up a lot of the population of the use of users that are making use of the digital um, technologies. So they should, um, the governments, the private sectors, the civil society organizations, the biz, um, and um, academia, they should all find a way to collaborate, to work more with you, to get their voices and to see how their visions for the general, um, for the future can be implemented in their plans as well. If not, it will just be the, um, it would be the um, it would not be the entire process wouldn't be so um, bottom up, it will be top down and then there will be a gap with the ideas and the ones with the government and between the governments and the futures. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Youth absolutely need to be engaged very meaningfully in this. Thank you both very much for having this conversation with me today. Um, I think it's a, a critical one to have right now, you know, as we know, over 50% of women in the world don't have access to the internet, 90% of students in sub-Saharan Africa don't have access to computers and technology, um, and the pandemic is really only um, magnifying all of these global issues, and so really bridging the gender digital divide has never been more important than it is right now. So it's very exciting to hear about the work that each of your organizations are doing um, and this very ambitious goal of bridging the gender gap uh, by 2026 that the Action Coalition has made a commitment to. Um, so this is a very exciting time to be mobilizing around this. And thank you both for your time today. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure to be here. Yes, it was an honor to, to share this, this conversation with Ufa and, and Anne. Uh, thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anne, Sylvia, and Ufa. It is time to launch a um, second poll to see which tactic you would like to champion um, under this theme. Um, I'm asking the technical team to launch the second poll and you will see the, the three tactics that were presented. One on innovative financing, one on improving um, accessibility uh, of digital services and learning tool, and one on addressing stereotypes. You have 30 seconds to cast your vote and I take a few remaining seconds to uh, highlight that we are lucky today that we have an artist with us 
who is doing some live drawing of our conversation. Um, her name is Esther Clark, and you could uh, you can see I think in the um, in the window uh, exactly where she is. And so we'll be checking with her uh, every now and then to see what she uh, how she's capturing our discussion. All right, we have the results of the poll. And definitely improving access accessibility of digital services and learning tools um, is something that you, you're really passionate about. Exciting. Now is the time to go to the second panel. And it's going to be a live panel. And I am very pleased to introduce our moderator. Her name is Yasadora Cordova. She is a public interest technologist and a former World Bank fellow on citizen enga engagement and agile. Yasadora. Over to you. Thank you, Willian. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. Uh, thank you all for being here, planning these important next steps, and thank you for the invitation for to moderate this vital discussion. Uh, so I'll start by introducing our two discussants. Uh, the first one is Latonia Mark Fred. She's the president and CEO of the Global Fund for Women. And we also have Renata Avila. She's the co-founder of the A Plus Alliance. And I would like to start the discussion by asking, uh, what is the ambition of the coalition in prioritizing uh, improving uh, investment and in feminist in innovation and technology? And what do you think are the pathways to a successful implementation of this tactic and why this is important to you and your organization. Should I start, Yasadora? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here with you and Renata. And thank you, Eileen. This is a, a really opportune moment. Um, and in fact, this moment is defined by incredible challenges. Um, and in and, and radical opportunities, quite frankly, COVID-19, the reckoning on racial justice, climate justice. So technology and innovation can be keys to a new future. Women and girls can use these tools for freedom of expression, to expand their potential and reach, and for creativity and joy. And we can harness and co-create technology for gender justice. But that's not where we are now. Now the digital gender gap is actually growing in many global South countries. The proportion of female inventors worldwide has almost doubled in the last 20 years, but it's still only 13%. And those numbers are not gonna change unless we put in the funding to transform harmful gender norms in tech. Most direct funding for technology currently comes from non-feminist funders and goes to large global North organizations, very few of which are explicitly feminist. The newest OECD report shows that only 2% of $540 billion overall funding gets to local women's rights organizations. And because feminist technology and infrastructure are not being funded and supported, power held by technology companies, governments, and regressive actors goes really unchallenged and it deepens already existing social inequalities. So we need to build more intersectional feminist platforms and transform current tech power and knowledge and privilege. And by getting more quality funding into the hands of autonomous feminist tech innovators and in civil society and experts in the global south and tech and innovation are not just side projects, but core infrastructure feminist movements need to progress gender justice globally. Thanks, Yasador. Thank you so much. Uh, now I would like to hand over to Renata. Yes, so I want to tell um, the public a little bit more and share the insights of our discussions in the coalition. And I have to say that we are like, very ambitious inside the coalition on not only the funding we need uh, uh, for this technology, which is a lot, if we compare with the funding available, you know, like for industry as it is, industry that is not delivering technology that is going to accelerate gender equality, quite the opposite as Latania was saying. We want we want to think big and open the door for women to play and imagine the futures, the, the infrastructures, the digital infrastructures of the future. And, and I think that that's the, that's, the, that's the space that generation equality gives us. It is five precious years when targeted commitments, but ambitious targeted commitments will give us the opportunity to prototype 
different feminist digital futures that are like uh, inclusive by design, feminist by default, and designed to scale and to be shared broadly. And I think that uh, this um, possibility to build, not only to receive technology that is designed for women, but to build technology by women, by diverse women, that's the ambition at the core of the coalition. We want um, these, uh, the laws and policies that will be developed by states and the practices, uh, internal practices that will be adopted by companies to be bold, to be radical. And uh, radical in a sense that we have seen in these uh, last 18 months how our system failed and how it is not delivering for anybody, for any actor in society. And this, this, uh, the, it, it is clear that digitization will be accelerated in the aftermath of this uh, global pandemic. And we want to be actors, we want to be shapers, we want to be architects of our digital future. That's, what, that's the ambition at the core of this coalition. And that needs ambitious commitment. It is not just mini grants for girls to be connected. That's important, that's an important component, but it is us being able to decide, decide co-design, co-deploy and evaluate the, the big technology projects that will be uh, uh, rolled out by uh, governments in the upcoming years. That's our ambition. And that's, I, I think that uh, uh, at, at the core of all of it, it is uh, procurement rules, but not only that, it, it requires more commitments, multi-sectoral sectoral commitments, inserting women, diverse women, not only engineers, diverse women in the design room, in the evaluation room, in the uh, deployment room. I think that uh, uh, technology is a cycle and we, we, we uh, will transform uh, our society by being present in each and every stage of that cycle. Thank you so much, Renata. Uh, I would like to for you to extend a little bit in the point that you say that is not just about grants, uh, because I think it's a great segue for for us to think about uh, how do you think we can take this action forward so that we can achieve a successful commitment making outcome? How do we deploy this this priorities? You know, like uh, to me, is, to me is very clear. Uh, it is um, um, grants is the first step, but I think the public funding is a very, very important uh, um, part of resources that can be uh, tagged specifically uh, for uh, women innovators, for women-led companies, and it's not happening. We need the commitment of states, and that's at the core of the coalition. We need the commitment of states to act differently and to we we need uh, this this space uh, is to accelerate gender uh, gender equality and access to public funds and access to substantial public funds and access to uh, not only substantial but uh, this uh, the possibility to co-design uh, social protection systems for example would open the door uh, for um, once we prototype uh, feminist technologies and one, once we can uh, see how this really uh, um, um, in the pilots, how this really is transforming uh, society in a small scale, then it can be like uh, expanded. And, and I have a lot of hope in this coalition because it involves many states that are already doing steps uh, in, in that direction. And, uh, the possibility that we have here as well is to co-create in collaboration because it is transcends frontiers. This is something that uh, can be like done um, in collaboration by uh, Global North, Global South, uh, companies, uh, civil society. Once we, we have these prototypes ready and we have these uh, pilots uh, working in five years time, then we can move to the most ambitious step to spread them all over uh, the planet. Thank you, uh, Latanya. Yes. Would you like to extend uh, on Renata's comment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I you know, Renata is right on point. 
Um, I too am most excited about scaling funding to the feminist organizations that are already doing this work. So when we talk about partnerships and building solutions and who's innovating, let me just give you a few examples um, of organizations that are already doing this work that we um, support through Global Fund for Women. We have a grantee partner in India who found that the Islamophobic COVID-19 hate speech and disinformation in India originated on Twitter before resulting in violence and death offline. They are looking to scale their digital safety and internet freedom initiatives and invest in digital forensics and internet freedom initiatives. Um, and so uh, we, we have another partner, let me just say in, in Mexico, um, who investigates cyber violence against women and advocates to authorities and with internet platforms to improve policies it has greatly raised the public's interest in digital violence in Mexico. The good news is feminist groups are already doing this pivotal work all around the world. We just need to invest in them. And so, you know, Prospera, the, the International Network of Women's Funds, calls on Generation Equality Forum participants to commit at least 50% of all funding pledges to fund directly autonomous women, girls, and trans-led feminist organizations and movements and indirectly through groups like ours, that the center of the leadership of these movements must be supported. And we know that partners need it for this work. Uh, together, we've been working on this AC work, all of us leaders here, to look beyond just funding and investment. We need resources, expertise, and experience to help shape the work that this action coalition so boldly wants to deliver. We want to see partners of all kinds. We want to see private sector governments, civil society members. You look at how this actual group of leaders have been set up and how interesting and different it is. We need to do that. And we need to get better at getting data to properly measure success. So understanding how we get the right data and how we need to use it will help us support our work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to make some, uh, to invite you both to make some closing remarks. That was wonderful. And I think this was really great. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. So should I just close um, Renata and Gasadora? Uh, I'll just hand over to Renata and then first. to okay, you, if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, together with what you said, Latane, just to close, I, I want this reflection. Many of the things that you mentioned that um, uh, organizations are working on the ground is patching technology that was designed in very, like, you know, close environments that, are, that were not inclusive, that were disconnected with reality. And we have been patching and patching and patching and suffering the consequences of failed uh, design design that he had, was exclusive, that was oriented on profit and not on public interest, and just designed by a very tiny um, uh, sample of the population. This is what we are going to change in these five years. We, that's, it is not only continuing the patching because we have these giants in front of us and, and a, a lot of uh, power disbalance, but we are going to start planting the seeds of the new technologies, the feminist inclusive technologies of the future. And let's hope that maybe we would not be on the top five uh, big tech uh, companies uh, in five years time, but let's hope that there's enough trust and investment in shaping this from scratch, you know, like creating these technologies that will uh, serve us to advance as, a hu as humanity. Those still do not exist, but it gives me a lot of hope that thousands millions of girls and women are connecting and let's connect them to creative power. Let's fund that creative power to shape our digital future. Thanks, Renata. That's so, and it's so cool because we, you know, what you're saying is so right. We know investing in feminist tech and innovation benefits everybody. Um, and, and I'm, you know, just sitting here thinking about the future of the in internet with this untapped potential that you're talking about in the hands of women and girls, and particularly women and girls in the global south, right? The next billion users will come from the global south. And, and so the tools and solutions for existing inequities and the future technological liberation should also come from this space. 
And we know feminist organizations and movements are not just tech users, right? But they're also creators and they have been disproportionately impacted by this heightened surveillance, these algorithms and other harmful aspects of tech. And we know feminist orgs acutely know the problems. They need to be funded to support the solutions. And just overall, I'm so excited about this AC onto women, tech and innovation. Um, the potential is just vast, and we already know so many of the solutions. We just need partners to come to the table and join us. And together, we can ensure tech and innovation build a much more just and equal world for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this was really great. I'll now hand, uh, hand over to, um, I'll now present another poll. Asking the technical team to put the next poll on. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> That's good. thank you so much. So um, the poll is about uh, which tactic would you like to champion, and I would like to invite you to vote. You have a few seconds to. Great, thank you so much. I'll hand over to Elaine. Thank you so much. Elaine? I'm here. Thank you so much. Um, yes, yeah, Odora. Thank you, Latanya. Thank you, Renata, for the excellent conversation. Um, I would like to, to take a look at the drawing and also acknowledge that, um, unfortunately, during the chat, there was some, um, 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 well, there's some unwelcome comments uh, and, and and shocking comments in the in the Q and A, and I would like to um, to tell uh, anyone that we are moderating uh, the Q and A as much as possible. We are trying to control uh, who has access to this room. We want this room to be a safe space where we can um, all be civil and all be respectful. So um, apologies for what just happened and all the comments have been removed and we, we will not let anyone send these kind of comments um, again. So moving on to the um, next segment, uh, I would like to introduce our next moderator. Uh, her name is Francisca Varela. She is the director of the Korea Foundation. She's connecting from Chile. And Francisca, over to you. Thank you, Alin. It's an honor to be here. And, and, and it's also an honor to introduce these two inspiring uh, leaders, uh, Monica Salaket, Minister of Women and Gender Equality of Government of Chile, and Shalu Garg. She is actually Managing Director of Stage Startups and Unicorns at Microsoft, also Forbes contributor and board member of UN Women. So, well, uh, the goal by 2026 is to double the proportion of women working in technology and in, in innovation by setting up new networks and benchmarks to transfer in the innovation ecosystems. This uh, specific subject, it's impossible not to take it personally. As a tech woman in different fields and environments, as entrepreneurship, research, corporate job, one of the most challenging topics uh, I was confronted was to plan my career. One of the causes uh, was not to finding role models. I couldn't visualize a whole path in tech uh, as my male mates. What I did uh, find is that build a safe ecosystem was a path. Uh, maybe I could not plan a future, but I can solve uh, in the present all these challenges with other women in tech by my side. And it was encouraging. Uh, when I was at the university, I was the only woman uh, of my generation studying computer science, one in 90 men. And at work environment, it wasn't different. In Chile, the women working in tech industry is only the 7%. And I want this to change. Uh, on my university time, I asked myself uh, if tech industry is one of the most well-paid what could happen if the poorest girls and women could get those jobs? How will they improve their family? How will change the tech industry, including those girls and women? And 
we already know this statement. We need more diversity to create better and diverse solutions, and we need more diverse solutions in, in the tech industry. Um, as we want to increase the participation number, to double the number, we need the collaboration of all actors, not only of the tech community, government, corporation, and not only tech women, also our main myth. And build the spaces in society where girls and women can feel as creators and not only uh, consumers of technology. And this is <laughs> my inspiration. How can we build these safe places? And Shalou, that I um, want to ask, uh, ask you to introduce why this team was selected by the coalition as one of the four priorities. Yes, um, great introduction, Francesca. Big hello to everyone. Uh, before we get started here, I wanted to thank uh, UN Women, uh, Global Equi Sorry, uh, can you guys hear me? My, my, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Sorry, I think I just lost, okay, I'm back. Sorry, I thought I lost my yeah. Wi-Fi. I wanted to thank everyone, especially UN Women and Generation Equality Forum for putting this forum together. Um, one of the main reasons what, when, we, you know, when we were brainstorming about how we want to look at technology and innovation with a fresh lens, there are a few factors that we considered. One was, of course, targeted support for women entrepreneurs and investors. So for decades, we've been talking about supporting female founders, getting more investments for them, seeing that number increase but the needle has hardly moved, right? So we said, all right, what are some of the criteria? What are some of the real life use cases that we can deploy and target them to support the female entrepreneurs and investors? Second is leveraging girls and women as role models. So oftentimes when we look up to someone, a female uh, leader or even a female colleague for that matter, we treat them as role models. So we wanted to build a framework as to how we can catalyze and, and sort of trigger this as in a framework. One of my favorite ones is uh, innovation hubs for cross pollination, and I and I truly, truly, you know, encourage this a lot. Which is, let's say, if we are in Kenya and we are looking at an innovation ecosystem, how can we leverage some of the best practices from there into, let's say, into Dubai or into Singapore? And so, it's extremely important to leverage the innovation hubs for cross pollination. I would say, um, having spent many years in the space, I will say that. Leveraging the power of technology is the strongest catalyst for change, and we have hardly scratched the surface, right? If you look at look around the world, there are Syrian refugee camps, there are girls, I, I think one of the speakers earlier mentioned that some of the girls are not even going to school and don't even have access to digital education. Look at the gap that's going to bring for them. And so keeping all of this and creating gender transformative networks within the innovation hubs to increase diversity and gender parity was one of the biggest motivation factors. And I recall the one of the earlier meetings that we had with Helene and others and uh, on the team was, you know what, it's, we, we've just talked a lot. Let's make sure that we put the right pieces together where we are actually walking the talk. Thank you, Shalou. Um, Minister, uh, in, the, in these times, you, you have worked a lot to uh, help women in the pandemic. And, and I want to know, how did the COVID-19 pandemic influence the leadership discussion? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us at the launch of the Technology and Innovation Action Coalition. And thank you, Francisca, for this very relevant question. And Chalou, for joining us tonight in this conversation. We have witnessed the dramatic effect that the pandemic has had in accelerating the digitalization of the economy and all aspects of our life, making technology an absolutely essential. This has only further exposed the multiple inequalities and gaps in access, skill development, and use of technologies by women and girls and their persistent underrepresentation in the workforce and the leadership of digital society. Understanding the magnitude of this challenge was crucial in the way that we shaped the blueprint. The goal at the core of this roadmap is to make sure the digital gender divide 
doesn't further increase due to the pandemic. And this is only possible with committed, coordinated global action and address the structural and systematic gender inequalities within the technology labor market at all levels. The pandemic also stressed that without engaging all actors involved in the technology and innovation ecosystem, our challenge will be unattainable. That's why we have strongly encouraged the creation of non-traditional partnerships, calling stakeholders to engage in collaboration between users, tech players, and states. These challenging times demand a united effort from all actors to implement bold action that enable women and girls to play a leading role in the digital revolution. We cannot miss this unique chance to build new inclusive ecosystems that allow women to take full advantage of technology and reach their highest potential as equal co-creator of the future. Thank you, Minister. And Shalub, as a leader, uh, what will success look like for a company, for your company? Yeah, so that's a great question. And thank you for that, Francesca. I would say, and if, if I was to take a broader, like broader stroke of what success would look like, I would say an ecosystem of founders where solutions are evaluated based on their potential rather than their gender. So it does not matter you know, what your gender is. If you have a rock solid solution, it's filling a gap, a market gap, it's challenging the status quo. It does not matter what, what gender you belong to. And so it's very important, back to my earlier point, is how do we leverage technology to break the brand new barriers down? And I can, I can literally go on and on about AI and machine learning and cloud technology, how that is actually helping empower the market overall to bring the, bring the gender bias down. So success is literally you know, being blindfolded about the gender, of a, the gender of a founder and really looking from an investment perspective, which I think Ufa mentioned a great point earlier on, is not really looking at a solution from um, the maturity or, or the age of the founder, but it's more about what, what the actual model is and how is it set to, to challenge the status quo. Well, um, the three tactics identified under these themes is one is create a gender transform transformative network within digital or innovation hubs to increase diversity and gender parity in tech workforce and leadership and stimulate interregional cooperation. Uh, as a policy, uh, adopt feminist public and corporate policy actions to transform digital economies and boost women and girls leadership and full participation in shaping digital technologies. And finally, data, we transform measurement of inclusion and diversity in digital economies and societies and hold accountable the political, social and industry actors most responsible for addressing the digital gender divide. And we have a, um, right now a poll and which tactic would you like it more about this three one? You have, is the poll? Yes, we have 30 seconds to vote. Which tactic would you like to champion? Do we have the results? Uh, not yet? Yes, we have the results. And the one that won is boost women and girls leadership and full participation in policies. Uh, and well, Shalou, uh, we have already the poll, but which tactics are you the most energized about? Yeah, so I would say all of them have equal bearing when we look at the impact, but the one that I'm extremely energized about is data, 
data for sure. And data is the strongest currency that we have right now. No matter which space of the market we are in, what we are doing, it's the strongest currency. And leveraging data to develop inclusive, ethical, and community-driven analytics, I mean, look at the power that, that it has to impact the future generations and the business that data can help drive. Um, I'm also pretty optimistic about defining a common framework and standardizing indicators to measure and monitor progress. So oftentimes when we look at reports, we say, gosh, like last year it was 10%, this year it's 11%. You know, it's just barely, the needle has moved by 1%. But the framework within which these parameters are measured vary from year to year. So it's extremely critical to leverage the data to define what that common framework looks like. The other thing is using AI and machine learning, big data to identify innovative ways to measure the gendered impact of digital transformation. I'll give everyone an example. Um, and, and this is, I'm, I'm going to change the name of the young girl that I know. There's a girl by the name Maya who lives in Somalia. And, um, you know, for whatever reason, she's not allowed to go to school. She's got older, two older brothers who, who do go to school but she's not, she's got to take care of a younger sibling. And so what, what we are thinking about is how do we challenge the status quo? The times have changed and especially COVID has pushed us to understand that when I say the word school, it does not necessarily mean a building, a teacher, you know, students, a desk. School can be from within your laptop. It can be from your cell phone. And so one of the things we are doing is taking the refurbished inventory of, of tablets like Surface and um, Apple, et cetera, and really making those as devices that can enhance the education system. So we're leveraging the power of technology. So now Maya sitting there has this device using biometrics, so using either her face recognition, so on and so forth, can actually get in there, go through the education process, and we sitting here can watch her performance through big data. We can capture all that goodness in the data that comes in. So think about the power that data has overall. One last thing that I do want, want to mention is creating a new data set to monitor the representation of women and girls in technology and innovation. I think we have talked enough today for this whole hour, yesterday as well, when we continue the discussion about technology and innovation. But it is extremely important to move with change as the times change. So the data sets that were valid 10 years ago are not valid today. And as we are getting into the new normal post COVID, we absolutely need to revisit them and say, all right, is this enough to move the needle? And if not, then how do we define the new data sets that are in there? Thank you so much, Shalom. So data is the new currency and we are in, uh, one of the parts is how we build with this data and how we teach girls also, uh, girls and women to develop with data. So Minister, uh, we need to build an ecosystem. So who are the key partners uh, we need to get on board to see the impact and uh, build a movement towards the Paris Forum. Our action coalition is very ambitious and determined to drive systematic change. This is only possible through collective, multi-sectoral engagement and gender transformative actions from all stakeholders. Government need to lead by example, by mainstreaming gender into all digital public policies and ensuring resource allocation to boost women and girls' leadership and full participation in digital economies and society. The commitment of the private sector is crucial, from startups to large corporations. Gender equality and parity need to be at the core of business strategies and policies to bring down barriers and stereotypes at all levels of the workforce and decision-making process. Philanthropies catalyze action by connecting talent and investor and financing network innovation and entrepreneurship to help women master and develop technology. 
Civil society's vigorous and proactive engagement is key to amplify the intersectional perspective and need of the women and girls they represent and to push for removing the barriers for inclusion and diversity in digital ecosystem. The voices of youth-led organizations must be at the table. Their strength and energy are an inspiration to change social norms and stress the importance of balanced intergenerational inter representation to transform innovation culture. And lastly, the United Nations and intergovernmental organization have to stimulate and articulate regional and global cooperation for bringing the digital gender divide. The Paris Forum is only three months away, so the time to act is now. Only by fostering all possible partnerships will we get farther, faster, and drive groundbreaking collective action to bridge the digital gender gap and build inclusive and accountable innovation ecosystems. Thank you so much. Um, to close, Shalu, I want to know what your advice will be to female founder entrepreneurs interested in tech sector? Yeah, no, absolutely. And great question. Um, I, I meet so many female founders on a daily basis. Me, me a nature of my job, I mentor a lot of female founders. And you know, one of the biggest challenges, struggles that I see them go through is nobody takes them seriously. And I've heard female founders tell me that, you know, I, my solution is not being taken seriously. And it's it, it's it's unfortunate that that happens. And so the biggest piece of advice I, I give founders there is do not take no sitting down. Right. If just because somebody tells you that your solution is not good enough, that doesn't mean that it's not good. It's your idea. It's your aspiration. It's your business model that you want to build. And do not just take no ones. Keep pushing. I mean, just go out there, create a network of mentors and coaches and investors. And um, I, as I mentioned, you know, folks who I mentor, so a lot of female founders look to folks like us in the enterprise companies to be their mentors and say, how can I help build a solution that eventually companies like Microsoft and other companies will buy? And so do not, do not give up. And if our goal is really to increase the investment for female founded businesses by 2026, it's all hands on deck and it has to come from all the sides and uh, just keep pushing. That's it, do not give up. Thank you, that was so inspiring. <laughs> and Minister, I will ask you the same question, but for a different audience. And um, what's your advice for women and girls that want to get into the tech sector? Technology and innovation shape the world. If we want a world where both women and men can meet their needs and realize their full potential, that new world needs to be equally built by women. We are 50% of the world population and thus have the talent societies need to create technology that brings a more equitable and prosperous future for all. Don't be held back by stereotypes. You are the creators of the future. Believe in your brilliance, the fearless, and do it. We have got your back, and we will make sure that you get to the forefront of the digital revolution. That's where you belong. Thank you so much. And thank you both for your time and your shares. And it was so inspired to hear you both. Thank you. Thank you, Francisca. Thank you, Minister Zaraket, and thank you, Shalu. It was a really interesting conversation. You've done the poll already, and and we've seen the trend. So we can we can move to the um, to the final chat, um, which is also a chat that had to be pre-recorded because our speaker are on a different time zone. Um, 
I'm very pleased uh, to introduce this moderator. Her name is Samia Melki. She is the president of Kadirat, which is a CSO in Tunisia. And I will, um, before introducing her, I will I'd like to tell you that this is a chat that has been recorded in French. So if you haven't put your interpretation, uh, it might be the time for you to put it now. So uh, I'm asking the technical team to launch the next video. It's the third video. Uh, I don't think, I think the sound is not working. So can you please uh, relaunch the video and try to check the sound? I'm trying to see with the technical theme. Can you, yeah, can you please try to fix the sound issue? Because we, we cannot hear it. It worked at the rehearsal, but of course, when you are the Action Coalition on Technology, something has to be wrong at some point. I'm asking the technology team uh, in Mexico, can you please um, start the video again? The audio is not working. Stefania, can we relaunch it? Yes, they are checking the audio. Oh, they're checking they the audio? Relaunching the video. Uh, while we do that, can we maybe have a quick look uh, to the work of Ether and to see where we are in the drawing? I saw it advancing. Oh. Give me a second. They are relaunching it. Ah, they're relaunching it. David Coffee. Yes. So this is still not working, Stefania? Or, yep. Please advise, because if it's not working, we, we can try to, um, to send it directly from Jack's computer. Apologies, everyone, for this a little technical glitch. Stefania, can you let me know? Otherwise, we will launch it from uh, Jack's computer. Stefania? If you have that video on your computer, it will be the best if you can. To play it? Uh, okay, no problem at all. So, um, Jack, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bonjour. Hola. Buenos dias. Salam alaikum. Uh, nous avons avec nous aujourd'hui Madame Alani, qui sera notre speaker, uh, notre panéliste aujourd'hui. Elle est professeure. Uh, elle représente la Tunisie aujourd'hui. Madame Alani uh, est la première femme en Tunisie à avoir uh, atteint le grade de professeur uh, en, uh, de l'enseignement supérieur en architecture à l'école uh, nationale d'architecture et d'urbanisme, dont elle a été d'ailleurs uh, uh, direct, la directrice. Euh, Madame Allen est actuellement euh, la directrice générale euh, du CREDIF, qui est euh, le centre euh, de recherche, de documentation et de l'information sur la femme en Tunisie. Euh, Madame, aujourd'hui, euh, on va euh, le thème que nous allons, euh, dont nous allons traiter aujourd'hui 
et le thème de, euh, de la prévention, de l'élimination de la violence basée sur le genre euh, en ligne. Euh, et euh, Madame euh, Alain euh, va vous en parler tout de suite. Cet espace virtuel qui est très important et qui peut faciliter la, la vie des jeunes femmes et des femmes peut aussi être un endroit non sécurisé. Et là, euh, je voudrais poser la question, cette question à Madame euh, Professeur Aleni. Euh, euh, pourquoi ce choix, le choix de ce thème, et particulièrement par la, 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 la coalition d'action Bonjour. Euh, euh, je, je remercie les organisateurs de cet événement pour euh, l'invitation. Je suis honorée de représenter la Tunisie. Euh, en fait, comme vous l'avez présenté, euh, euh, l'Internet, avec l'avènement euh, de l'Internet et des technologies de l'information et de la communication, le numérique contribue euh, à l'essor euh, d'une culture participative en ligne. Et puis, l'environnement virtuel devient un lieu d'ouverture vers les autres, euh, un espace public virtuel de sociabilité et de renforcement euh, du capital social. Euh, cet intérêt pour l'espace virtuel, il revêt une importance particulière pour les femmes dont la présence euh, est traditionnellement euh, codée dans l'espace euh, public physique. Donc, celles-ci, elles ont essayé d'investir l'espace public virtuel. Ces médias sociaux, comme on l'a dit, bien qu'elles ouvrent des nouvelles opportunités pour ces femmes, euh, pour la communication, l'apprentissage, la socialisation, ça, il devient aussi un espace de vulnérabilité, de violence en, envers ces femmes. C'est pour ça que ce thème, il revêt une importance primordiale euh, pour, euh, pour les pays euh, de la coalition. C'est important d'essayer de faire face à ce, type, euh, à ce nouveau type de violence à l'encontre des femmes et des filles, parce que euh, dans plusieurs pays du, du monde, Plusieurs femmes affirment avoir subi de la violence numérique sur les divers médias sociaux qu'elles utilisent. Donc, c'est important de, de faire face à ce type de violence parce que, euh, au niveau de la violence physique, la violence physique, elle est visible. Euh, on peut euh, bien euh, se, rendre, se rendre compte de cette violence physique. Mais pour la violence numérique, c'est important de s'intéresser à cette thématique, à cette question, euh, parce qu'elle n'est pas visible, parce que l'impact sur ces femmes, sur leur, leur psychologie, sur leur quotidien, euh, sur leur vie économique, sur leur travail, elle, il est très euh, important et c'est important que euh, les pays de la coalition commencent à s'intéresse à, 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 à cette thématique parce que c'est une thématique d'actualité. Euh, les champions de, de, de la coalition euh, euh, ont choisi ce thème-là pour son importance quand vous, voulez, euh, quand vous venez de le dire. Et euh, bien sûr, dans les discussions, euh, leurs discussions, ils ont euh, identifié plusieurs thèmes dans celui-là euh, parce que ça touche euh, à la sécurité des femmes. Et ça, c est, c est aussi, ça peut constituer un grand handicap à l'épanouissement des femmes ou à leur liberté. Et, et euh, donc, la, 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 ceci m'amène à la question, quelles sont les tactiques euh, qui, qui euh, vous inspirent le plus ou qui vous, euh, qui vous passionnent le plus vis-à-vis euh, -vis de, 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 de ce thème il y a plusieurs tactiques, plusieurs euh, actions qu'on peut entreprendre euh, pour, qui nous permettent de réinventer l'éducation pour la génération des jeunes euh, d'aujourd'hui, essayer de construire collectivement euh, l'avenir avec ces jeunes-là, essayer d'avoir euh, un changement euh, vers des, des mécanismes de financement aussi 
innovant pour une euh, évolution numérique inclusive du genre. Euh, en, en plus, c'est important d'avoir des actions envers ces jeunes-là parce que les jeunes, ils sont les plus vulnérables. Euh, quand on, on, on se moque d'une un, petite fille, d'un enfant sur le net, il y a le bullying que les jeunes ont du mal à résister à ces moqueries, à ces... Euh, à, ce, euh, à, à l'harcèlement aussi en ligne, à, la, à cette violence en ligne. Et il y a des jeunes qui parviennent même au suicide. Donc, c'est important d'avoir de, des tactiques spécifiques qui permettent d'inculquer, d'avoir cette culture numérique de, dès le jeune âge, avec des partenariats avec euh, les, les structures publiques, avec les ministères de l'éducation, pour essayer d'inculquer cette culture numérique des droits aussi, et puis des, des droits humains pour essayer de mettre en place aussi euh, des, des campagnes de sensibilisation parce que c'est important de bien définir cette violence numérique. On, on doit avoir des politiques et des tactiques de façon à amener les gens à, à connaître ce, ce type de violence pour pouvoir bien faire face à, à, à cette violence. Merci Mais... beaucoup, Madame Haleni. Voilà, euh, euh, les, les champions des coalitions ont bien identifié euh, des tactiques. Donc, c'est les tactiques qui vous interpellent euh, et qui, euh, euh, qui résonnent bien, que vous venez de, 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 de dénumérer. Euh, euh, je, je voudrais peut-être... Euh, vous posez une dernière question. Vous avez d'ailleurs travaillé sur une des tactiques, peut-être avant même de faire le lancement, de la, de, de, du for, euh, du lancement de, 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 des coalitions euh, pendant ce forum. Euh, vous avez euh, travaillé sur une étude euh, pour mettre le, le, le doigt sur euh, les, faiblesses, les, les, les dangers de, 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 de la violence numérique. Effectivement, nous avons euh, procédé à une étude exploratoire. On voit sur une copie. Cette étude exploratoire que nous avons en fait réalisée en 2019, qui nous a montré, et elle vient suite à une étude nationale euh, qu'avait fait le Crédif euh, sur la violence euh, à l'encontre des femmes basées sur le genre euh, dans l'espace public, qui nous, qui, est, qui nous a donné des chiffres alarmants. Euh, C'est que 53,5% des femmes subissent euh, de la violence dans l'espace public. Public. Cette étude de 2019 que nous avons fait sur la violence dans les médias sociaux et nous avons pris comme exemple le Facebook, vu qu'en Tunisie, plus différentes catégories sociales utilisent Facebook, nous a confirmé aussi que bon, le, le, le Facebook, les médias sociaux, c'est un espace public virtuel que quatre femmes sur cinq ont subi une violence euh, numérique, c'est-à-dire euh, c'est le pourcentage de 89%, mais que 95% de ces femmes ne portent pas plainte. Pourquoi Parce que euh, elles ont peur euh, de la, de, de, du regard de leur famille, du regard de la société, parce que l'harceleur, il détient des photos ou des vidéos ou des documents très privés et qu'il veut publier sans le consentement de la victime, donc elles sont un peu euh, déstabilisées, elles, sont, elles ont peur, elles subissent de la violence numérique qui, qui atteint à leur... Euh, à leur Merci bien. beaucoup, Merci beaucoup, Madame Aleni. Maintenant, je, je voulais dire que euh, c'est extraordinaire que la Tunisie, euh, d'abord, euh, a été choisie comme... Euh, euh, champion de la coalition d'action, cette coalition d'action, euh, euh, et aussi, euh, bon, elle est là maintenant, on est là aujourd'hui euh, dans ce, ce, ce forum qu'on a tant, tant, tant attendu, et on sait qu'il allait avoir lieu euh, l'année dernière, cependant, euh, à cause du Covid-19, ça a été retardé, 
euh, euh, beaucoup de gens euh, nous posaient la question « Mais qu'est-ce que ces actions de coalition euh, Ça rime à quoi ?» Qu'est-ce que vous voulez euh, Qu'est-ce que vous voulez réaliser Bon, bien sûr, c'est venu d'un constat que les, 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 cho les choses ne progressent pas comme il le faut, qu'il y a des stagnations dans, et que malgré les avancées euh, légales dans, dans les outils euh, juridiques, etc., autant internationaux que nationaux, il y a quand même quelquefois même euh, non seulement des stagnations, mais un retour en arrière. Les jeunes, par exemple, dans notre thème, sont les plus concernés puisqu'ils sont les plus euh, confrontés à la violence dans les espaces, puisqu'ils sont les, 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 les utilisateurs majeurs de cet espace euh, numérique. Euh, donc, euh, voilà. Merci beaucoup, Madame Aleni. Euh, je suis très contente euh, d'être de, 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 avec vous aujourd'hui. Euh, gardons espoir. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous et merci à tous les organisateurs. Merci beaucoup. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Samia and uh, Madame Alani. Uh, we're going to be launching the last uh, poll on, um, on this thematic uh, to try uh, to see which uh, tactics uh, resonates the most with the group. So you can see the first one is to design tools to better prevent, detect, and respond and monitor to online violence. Another one on enhancing legislation and law enforcement and restorative justice. And the last one on how we demonstrate cultural change. It's a tricky one because there are all three, three of them very important. And I can see that you are, yeah, that you are quite split as well. And the final results um, show that enhancing legislation and law enforcement is an important priority for the group. So thank you so much um, to all the speakers and all the moderators. Uh, there were some very uh, lively and interesting questions and discussion in the, um, in the chat. And I've tried to extract the essence of it to, to ask you Uh, each of you uh, um, a question in the na next 10 minutes and so I will ask you to to answer um, in a few sentences and um, quite a lot of comments were on how do we define feminist technology and innovation and well you will not be surprised that um, to discover that this is a discussion we had a lot um, in our groups trying to see how we define it what do we um, what do we mean by that when we we want to channel more investment um, towards this specific type of technology and innovation and um, maybe what I will do is um, ask Latanya and Renata to tell us how we can make digital tools and digital data data analytics Uh, more feminists, because that's something that you, you've touched upon in your in your panel. And after that, I will ask um, Minister Zalaket and Shalou, maybe also how we can make digital spaces and digital platforms uh, more feminist and more accessible and safer for um, women and girls who are uh, trying to use it. So uh, I'll start uh, with you, Renata, and maybe then go to you, Latanya, for the first one. Renata? If we've lost Renata, Latanya, can I go to you because I see, <laughs> I see you. Please go ahead. She's putting back on her lipstick. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much, Eileen, and thank you to you and women for this opportunity. Um, the question is, um, you know, I, I think a simple one and a fair one, but the way we make feminist tools more, di uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> digital tools more feminist is by working with feminist partners. And it was part of what I was trying to say earlier is that there are organizations who are committed to feminist thinking, to feminist justice. Um, and those are the groups that we have to work with in order to ensure. And this doesn't mean just women, it also means men um, who have been at the cornerstone of ensuring gender justice for all. And so we want to um, make sure that when we're talking about Um, you know, women innovation in tech that we understand that a feminist intention means that we need to fund feminist groups who have been looking at women's rights and human rights uh, aligned for many, many decades. Um, and they understand the issues and they um, are 
totally aligned offline as they are online. And these are the groups that are going to continue to protect, protect other organizations and they're going to protect the space for women, girls, and trans. And so I want to, um, you know, I don't want us to get looped out by the word feminism. What we're saying here is that there are feminist groups that already exist and they're already tackling this issue around technology. And those are the groups that we need to be aligned with whoever we are, whether we're government, civil society, or civil private sector. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you so much, Fatania, and very true. Uh, Minister Zalaket, uh, do you also want to come in? Sí. Eh, muchas gracias, Helen, por esta excelente pregunta. Eh, entendemos por tecnología feminista aquella que responde a las necesidades particulares de las mujeres y niñas y hace uso de la innovación para corregir desigualdades de género preexistentes. Tanto la tecnología como ecosistema y espacios digitales feministas solo son posibles cuando se incorporan políticas públicas y privadas con perspectiva de género, para impulsar la participación de las mujeres en los distintos procesos de desarrollo de soluciones tecnológicas e innovadoras, de modo que incorporen las necesidades de las mujeres y niñas, evitando los sesgos en los servicios y productos. Thank you so much. And, and Shadow, do you, do you want to add to that from your own perspective? Shadow? I can't see Shadow anymore. Uh, so um, maybe then um, another question that was asked at the beginning um, about digital rights. Um, I know we know that Beijing was famous because uh, we said that women rights are, are human rights. And, and, and there was a question about the linkages between human rights and digital rights. Um, and Renata had already started to respond um, to this question by saying that it, it should be one and the same. Uh, and I would love to um, to hear your um, your view on that. And and uh, maybe uh, Minister Zalaket, you would like to comment from the perspective of your country. How do you envision digital rights um, in Chile? Minister Zalaket, we cannot uh, hear you. Yes. No cabe duda que la tecnología hoy se ha convertido en una herramienta de primera necesidad. Es más, hoy el mundo digital es una verdadera extensión del mundo real. Es por eso que los países debemos avanzar a paso firme para asegurar que todos y todas podamos tener acceso y así poder participar de estos profundos cambios que están afectando los diversos, los diversos ámbitos de nuestra vida la telemedicina, el teletrabajo, el e-commerce y la teleeducación son una muestra de esta nueva realidad y los países debemos hacer los mayores esfuerzos para que nadie quede rezagado de este nuevo mundo. Indeed, thank you. And, and, and maybe over, over to you, um, Latanya, for for the same question and the, and the final question. Um, obviously in your role and with all the, um, all the feminist movement that you support, the issue of digital rights is also probably at the core of the discussion you have your, with your grantee. Do you want to reflect on that? Yeah, and thank you. I love it. I saw the, the question and, you know, digital rights are human rights. I absolutely feel like in the world that we live in, in the world that we're moving into for our children, that we have to see the ability to be able to um, assert and empower women um, as far and, you know, as well as protect them in online spaces is absolutely important. And beyond that, I think some of the conversations we've heard today about the actual architecture and the leadership and creating digital space or co-creating the digital space is profound. And I think that that has to be 
how we think about it. We have to think about it as a human right if we are going to get to some of the goals that this AC on women tech and innovation is concerned with, because it's not going to be a little, you know, drop here or drop there. It has to be major systemic changes that have to happen. And I do believe thinking about it as a human right and understanding that the rights that women, girls, and, and trans have in is accessing this technology is going to be as important as any human right that they have, or especially accessing all of their human rights. So, so thank you for the participant that wrote that in. Well, thank you, and thank you for the for the powerful answer. Um, and well, a big thank you to all the moderators and speakers uh, for this really exciting, insightful uh, segment. And, and we are now reaching the last minutes of our dialogue. And before the closing, uh, I would like to welcome back um, our executive coordinator of the Generation Equality Forum, Lupa Banerjee, who will share with you uh, what's lying ahead for the action coalitions. Thank you so much, Alain, and thank you to the leaders for this absolutely spectacular discussion. Thank you so very, very much. And, uh, and let's look at this transformative blueprint that has emerged from your discussions just now. Uh, you spoke, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being able to summarize the richness of the discussions, but just a few things that stood out for me. Uh, you spoke of, of uh, uh, the radical opportunities uh, that tech and innovation uh, offer in terms of uh, co-creating technology for gender justice. Uh, supporting movements, uh, offering joy and connection, the feminist infrastructure not being funded as we need it to, the need for intersectional feminist platform, the fact that tech and innovation are core projects that feminists need to progress. Uh, the minister talked about the funding we need is so much more than what we already have. And for, uh, for women to imagine the digital infrastructures and prototype feminist digital futures, the, uh, the issue of scaling funding to feminist organizations that are already doing this work, the need for role models and innovation hubs for cross-pollination and gender transformation, the increase to female-funded businesses by 2026. And I mean, these are just a few of the highlights. So as we move on from Mexico towards Paris, we are now uh, at the moment when this is the call for commitments. We want more stakeholders to join as commitment makers, to join the, the efforts of the Action Coalition leaders. The, the commitment makers will play a catalytic role in the success of the Action Coalitions by making groundbreaking commitments in some of these areas that you have already highlighted. And, 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 and through their commitments, commit to the finalization of the blueprints and to their monitoring and implementation. The commitment making platform is live already on the Generation Equality Forum website, and we invite um, more stakeholders to join uh, uh, so, and, and that these transformative commitments together with the Action Coalition leaders and the commitments that you will make will enable the achievement of the world that the action coalitions are calling for. A world of equal rights and opportunities uh, the, for the major systemic changes in the tech sphere and making digital rights, human rights. Maybe that will be the call as we go forward that digital rights are human rights because that's the way of, of the future. Thank you so much for this fantastic discussion and all the best for tomorrow and onwards to Paris. Thank you so much, Robana, and I couldn't agree more <laughs> with your last uh, sentence. Um, before uh, we move to the closing, I would like to kindly ask the technical crew to show us the final drawing that uh, either have been has been drawing during the whole session uh, that reflects um, all the inspiring thoughts and comments that were shared today. Uh, no, this is not what we wanted. This is <laughs> this is something else, but let's go with that and maybe come back to it there afterwards. What you're being shown right now is actually something that we commissioned to a young artist named uh, Sana Hamad. She lives in Pakistan 
And basically we ask her to look at the blueprint and to see if she could come up with a design that reflects our vision and our ambition um, to leverage technology and innovation to create uh, a more equal world for the women and girls. And so, as you can see, it reflects all our hopes and aspiration. Um, and, and many of the topics we've discussed today, you can see our four actions there, access, feminist innovation, ecosystem, and self digital spaces. And this is uh, another video that um, we have prepared because this is the final part of the agenda where we want to take a minute to thank and honor all the team members, all the leaders that have worked tirelessly on the preparation of the blueprint. Um, we have, for most of us, never met in person because we've all been working remotely under very challenging circumstances like all of us. And so today, even if we cannot be present in Mexico, we wanted to bring the team together and show the true spirit of this coalition, which is to bring people across countries, sectors, organization, to make gender equality a reality for all generations. So thank everyone who made that possible. Um, the technical team, is it possible to go back to Heather and her drawing before we close? If it's not possible, Stefania, talk to me. If it's not, uh, let's let's move on with uh, the final final words. Uh, I would like to thank you, everyone, for watching. Everyone who has joined from so many different parts of the world. Uh, for some of you, it was early morning. For some of us, it was very late at night. Um, thank you to our presenters, to our panelists, um, as well as the team at UN Women at the Tech Support Crew in Mexico. Uh, to say goodbye, we'd like to leave. Uh, with the inspirational words of our partners. They are activists, supporters, friends, and they have kindly shared with us their vision of how they imagine a more digital equal world. Before we share this video, I can see that uh, the drawing of uh, Heather has come on, on screen. So thank you so much. Uh, we will put this drawing in our booth in the exhibi exhibition hall so that you can see it. And, and clearly this is magnificent. It really, it's beautiful. It really reflects all the, of the keywords and, and, and powerful statement that were made by our, our speaker today. Um, as I mentioned, now that we're moving to the closing, I'm gonna kindly ask the technical team to play the final Imagine video. Imagine a world device. where women have louder voices with technology. To achieve this, we need to use technology and innovation as powerful tools to solve gender inequality problems. Para mí, un mundo con igualdad de acceso y competencias digitales es un mundo en el que entendemos que estamos en medio de la cuarta revolución industrial en la que la transformación digital no es una elección y que por tanto los derechos digitales son derechos humanos. I imagine a future where innovation and technology helps us address specific problems that women face all around the world. To achieve this, we need to understand the needs and make a strong connection with what women need and what technology can offer. A world with equal digital access and confidence looks like a world in which everyone can access digital technologies, develop comparable skills in STEM, and participate in decision-making roles in the ICT field. I imagine a world where women are shaping our future with innovation and technology. I imagine a world where women are visible in innovation ecosystem. That world looks like a world that's unbiased against women. That world includes women from the beginning as the creators, curators, and decision makers in the technology and products that we use, not only for their benefit, but for the benefit of all of society. Imagine a world in which every nonprofit had a data scientist so they could take control of algorithms themselves. By building them, increasing representation of those who are creating them, or even decreasing bias in ones that already exist. To me, a world with feminist technology is a world where tech is no longer shaped by the patriarchy, by capitalism and colonialism. I think feminist technologies are essential to achieving gender justice. And to make that happen, we need to commit to educating women and girls. We need to commit to providing equal access to the internet to women and queer people. And ultimately, we need to support the feminist movements who are already building feminist technologies everywhere. In a world without gender-based violence or tech-facilitated discrimination, everyone could be whoever they wanted. They could dress however they wanted. They could express themselves as they are. 
without the fear of being harassed. I wouldn't have to waste my time blocking and reporting online abuses and use my mental resources to think how to get out of these threatening situations. I wouldn't have to fear that online violence could materialize in the offline. As a victim, I wouldn't have to convince others that my experiences of violence are true. Yes, there is a need to set standards on what constitutes online violence, harassment and abuse against women and girls and develop transparent and accessible reporting mechanisms and removal policies to be able to hold media and companies running social media and online platforms accountable for removing such content. En este espacio, yo me imagino que cada uno aportaría con experiencias de vida diferentes, creencias distintas, opiniones diversas y también habilidades y competencias que se complementan uno a la otra y que no necesariamente todos piensan igual, sino que al revés, las distintas miradas construyen las mejores soluciones del futuro.